Sleep is the best performance enhancement that's all natural, that nobody is using properly, doing properly in the modern world. But after we go through a few things here that literally nobody's even talking about, you're gonna see double the strength gains and muscle gains. You're gonna skyrocket testosterone levels. You'll never get sick again. You'll have infinite energy levels and you're gonna recover better than ever. Now, it's a very interesting way how I came to this conclusion in the first place and how I came to the research about sleep and how powerful it actually is. And so I'm gonna share my story real quick with you. And it's going to bring us back to where I was about 23, 22 years old, which is near the beginning of my YouTube journey. So I actually have a lot of this documented, okay? Now during this time, I was working out consistently, I was going through all my workout programming, I was super strict on my diet, but I started working about 100 hours a week or up to 100 hours a week most cases, that's right. 100 hours a week. So I was a young guy and I was really, really committed, dedicated, motivated to just making as much money as possible and just making something of myself, getting the sickest physique, getting the sickest everything, right? And at the time, I just simply didn't even know that sleep was that important. I thought, yeah, sleep is important for health reasons, right? And I'll worry about health when I'm old enough to have to worry about it. Now, that was a huge mistake that I made. So I start working these 100 hour weeks and I did that for about five months straight. During this time, I was sleeping somewhere between four and five hours a night. Again, cranking my workouts, crushing it. You can see my physique from that time if you go back to the 2018 Cutting Chronicles uh, playlist on my channel. So my physique was looking good, I was cutting, I was super strict on my diet, I was commuting like crazy, working all the time, reading, all of that, dropping YouTube videos. So the workload was pretty crazy. Now, during that time, I thought everything was good and I felt really good, but one of the other things that I was doing to keep myself awake was I was pumping massive amounts of caffeine, caffeine pills daily, pre-workout when I would get ready for the gym. And so my theory was, okay, I can sleep four, five hours per night for the first six days of the week, and then I'll sleep my eight hours to recharge on Sundays, okay? This is how I was going about it. And I felt fine, I felt good. I thought, why would I sleep when I can spend that time doing more work, being more productive, reading more, learning more? What does it really have to do with muscle gain anyways? I mean, my physique is doing great. This was a near fatal mistake as I would soon find out because one day after about five months of this, I woke up, I drove to, at the time I was coaching in a studio, I drove to the studio at 5 a.m. was the first class. I'm prepping the whole studio, all class. Everybody starts coming into the, to the studio. I'm by myself prepping things and all of a sudden I start feeling this severe, sudden, sharp, stabbing pain in the left side of my chest where my heart is. And okay, obviously you stop for a second, you wait, you wait it out, right? Okay, a little pain, no big deal. Uh, it wasn't really going away, which was kind of insane. It, it felt kind of messed up but it dissipated slightly. And I thought, okay, maybe this will continue for the rest of the day. I'm sure it'll go away. Obviously, if I wake up and it's still here tomorrow, I'm gonna go get checked out. Now, the pain dissipated, but instead what happened was starting the next day, I started having episodes of random fainting, okay? I was literally, I'd be driving down the highway and all of a sudden, I feel the need to pass out. I pull over as quickly as I can, wait it out, what's going on? almost passing out, almost causing accidents. Then I'm training clients in person too at the time. As I'm training a client, I would sit down, making them think like, yeah, I'm, I'm watching your form. No, I was watching to see if I was gonna make it through this session, okay? So I start fainting or having very near fainting episodes throughout the entire day. Very few people are aware of this. I start having short-term memory loss. I can't even remember conversations and this becomes acutely apparent to me. And another crazy thing is I started losing clumps of hair rapidly. I just started waking up and noticing this is weird. What's all this hair doing in my bed? All this hair in the sink. I didn't think much of it. And that's when it all started hitting me with these fainting episodes. And funny enough, on the way back home, when I decided I need to find out what's happening to me, I was listening to a podcast that included Matthew Walker, who is a sleep scientist. And on the podcast, he starts talking about the destructive effects of sleeping less than six hours a night. Again, this is health reasons, so I thought, okay, big deal. But as far as performance and building muscle and 
physique and injury recovery and all of that, you're about to understand how impactful this is. To finish up with the story, I did make it out. I went to a clinic ASAP, obviously, and all the doctors ran all these tests on me, heart tests, everything, because it was pretty messed up the state I was in. And they started coming to the conclusion. They said, look, whatever you're doing, you're obviously not sleeping. You mentioned to us how much caffeine you're pumping. You need to stop this before this becomes life-threatening, before this becomes actually serious. So obviously I took their advice, instantly weaned off the caffeine, started focusing on sleep a little more, working a little less, basically took three total months to recover from this. Now, obviously this is an extreme example. Because it was so extreme, I experienced basically all of the negative effects of not sleeping enough in a shortened window. And you can imagine all the amazing changes I saw to my physique at the time, I had lost a lot of them also and I was experiencing constant aggravations and injuries along the way. So that's my story. And now recently, I have been sleeping closer to eight to nine hours every single night. And let me tell you, it has changed my entire life, my training, my physique, everything to such an extent to where I had to make this video. You know, in this day and age, we're competing with people to see who sleeps less. You know, I'll sleep when I'm dead and that type of mindset. And I understand why you would have that mindset when you're so young and you haven't been dumb enough as I was to go through something like this and really see the consequences. So what a lot of people do is they'll sleep like six hours a night and they think that's okay. Or they'll sleep, they'll be in bed for seven hours, one and a half hours of that is scrolling social media, whatever. They don't realize the detrimental effects. It's because I, just went all in in such a short period of time that I had the epiphany of realizing, wait a second, this sleep thing is probably a lot more important than we realize. So now I'm literally competing with people instead of like, oh, you know, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Oh, I don't sleep as much. I'm working 19 hour days. I'm over here like, brother, I'm sleeping nine hours. How much you sleep eight and a half? I'm going nine and a half. See if you can catch up. I'm literally competing with people to see if I can sleep longer than them. That is the competition you wanna have if you wanna win, if you wanna build an insane physique, okay? If you have relatively average genetics, if you've got top tier 1% genetics, I'm sure you can get away with a lot of stuff. And even still, if you had those genetics, then you're even better off with the sleep because then you'll see absolutely, you'll, you'll basically see steroid-like results without taking the steroids because sleeping enough and with enough quality is essentially the closest thing you can get to taking steroids as a natural lifter who wants to build a naturally aesthetic, strong, lean, muscular physique, and you wanna get lean and shredded at the same time, this is gonna be the closest thing that comes to it. It's not a supplement, not a testosterone booster, it's this. Why do people not care so much about sleep and why are most people not getting enough of it? Well, there's four main reasons. Number one is the hustle mode that I talked about already that I fell for. And you might be falling for it too. You might be thinking, I don't have time to sleep that much. So we get into this weird thing where nowadays people are trying to see how much sleep they can get away with. Again, totally wrong mindset, which I'll discuss shortly why that is an issue and why why it happens and how we can think about it differently, flip that perspective on its head. Number two is people just don't understand how important it is. Kind of goes to the first point. And just in general, there's not much education. There hasn't been much research around this topic as of until maybe the last couple decades. So there's not much education on it. You're growing up, you're not really taught how important sleep is because most people don't know how important it is. That's why most people are cutting it. And that's why most people's lives and bodies, physiques, mindsets, everything are completely out the window. The third point I already kind of touched on lack of education around it and research. It's very difficult to get research done around sleep because a lot of people aren't willing to forcefully go several days, weeks in a row without much sleep, which is what a study would probably require. And it's funny because it's like we have a natural instinct to know that sleep is, I mean, think about it this way. If sleep wasn't as important as it is, or maybe the most important aspect of health and building a physique and fitness and all of an output work in general, if it wasn't the most important, why after millions of years of evolution has nature not only not phased it out, but not even cut it down. There's some animals out there that sleep like 21 hours in a night. So it just goes to show how crucial sleeping actually is and how it probably always will be that way. In other words, nature itself has no substitution for this absolute miracle type of a drug, if you will, if you wanna call it a drug, this miracle habit that will prime your body to be essentially invincible. All right, the last reason that a lot of people don't get 
the enough sleep that they need or care about it is based on recommendations, right? So we've all heard the recommendations and there's actually a genuine flaw with those, at least if you're somebody that wants an exceptional physique and an exceptional level of fitness and output in general. So here are the things that we need to address, three main points and fixes for them. Number one is understanding the actual recommendations that we've all heard of and that we all kind of go by or use as a guideline. And the second part of that point is understanding bedtime versus sleep time. There's a massive difference. The recommendation, we've all heard of it, is seven to nine hours, which is funny because that is one recommendation made for basically the entire population. Now, not accounting for individual differences, they're still expecting that most people, whether you know there's certain ages, things vary, most people are gonna fall between at least seven hours to nine hours. Keep in mind, that's sleep time. A big mistake that people make is they think bedtime is sleep time. So I hear this all the time, people are like, yeah, you you know, I get my seven hours, I'm in bed at 11 p.m. and I wake up at 6 a.m., right? And it's like, well, if you're going to bed at 11, you're probably not asleep until 11.30, even 12. And then during that time of sleeping, you're awake and your body comes out of sleep for a bit for maybe another 30 minutes, sometimes worse, depending on the other things we'll cover. And the result of that is you are in bed for seven hours. You might be sleeping five and a half, and that is absolutely destructive. But here's a question I wanna ask you, right? So we know that seven to nine is supposedly the recommendation, but that's the recommendation for average people. But that begs the question, right? Average, who are average people working out a lot or even at all regularly? Are average people seeking and trying to build and working towards an exceptional physique, building lots of muscle, putting a lot of strain on their body, working out vigorously? Are average people active at all? Are the metabolisms as high as non-average people seeking all these things? In other words, the people that would be subscribed to and watch my channel, the people that actually resonate with what I'm talking about here. Are average people even seeking to be the best versions of themselves, create the best output in their life, physically, mentally, emotionally, for their family, for their loved ones, at their career, and all of that? And I think the answer to all of these would be a pretty obvious no. For that reason, we should be thinking of ourselves as athletes because that's what we are now we might not be professional athletes we're not getting paid full-time to make a living doing that but we should still see ourselves as professional athletes or at least treat ourselves the same way they do because they take their health and fitness extremely seriously they sleep way more than the average person which okay there's going to be a point again because we don't have all the time in the world just dedicated to that may not be realistic we don't have to sleep for 10 hours but my recommendation is, if you wanna see yourself as an athlete, recover it like one, perform like one, and have a physique like one, then eight to nine hours should be the absolute minimum of actual sleep time that you stick to. And that again was what changed it for me because I thought I was always aiming for the seven. That's what everybody does. We aim for the low end of the recommendation spectrum. Seven hours, no big deal. But then I realized I'm lifting weights vigorously, I'm breaking down and constantly having to recover my body from these vigorous workouts. Surely a lot of other people aren't doing that. My metabolism's really high, I'm doing a lot of cardio, so I decided to take it up another hour and then another hour. At one point I was sleeping nine hours in a row consecutively for a couple of weeks straight and I literally felt like Superman. I, I imagine, I'd never taken steroids before, but I imagine that's what it felt like to take artificial performance enhancers, but the cool thing is, is this was all natural and it didn't actually take much effort because you're sleeping. So that's the first thing is have a perspective shift on the recommendation and never aim for the low end. I would say that the minimum that you should be aiming for is eight hours of total sleep time, which means bedtime should be around nine hours. Now that might sound difficult based on where you are now, but that's going to be the second point, which is how you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you don't stick to things consistently, have schedules for them, have dedicated time slots for them, then you're not going to be very effective in doing those things. And it's going to leak into other areas of your life. If your nutrition is is inconsistent, your energy levels are gonna be inconsistent, your workout performance is gonna be inconsistent, so your muscle gain, your results, your fat loss is gonna be inconsistent, your willpower, your nutrition, your discipline is gonna be inconsistent, your sleep cycles and your sleep quality is gonna be inconsistent, and that's just gonna keep feeding back in on itself. So we take that logic and apply it here and understand that actually all of that starts and ends with your sleep cycle. How much sleep you're getting, you can build a sleep cycle around that. It doesn't mean waking up at 4 a.m., it might mean waking up at six. Right now I wake up at 6.30 every single day because that's the time that I can get to the gym when it opens seven days of the week if I need to. So there's never really gonna be a time where I have to wake up later than that. And so 
if I can ensure that I wake up at the exact same time every day, even if I go to bed at different times, that's not nearly as bad. If I can wake up every single day at the same time, that's key. And if I can build a schedule or a window where I know I'm winding down at let's say 9 p.m. and I'm in bed by 10, not 9.30. Sometimes I've got, I finished early and what are you gonna do? Actually, you're gonna take the extra time to sleep, not to work more. The odd time, maybe it does go that way, but I'm taking the extra time to sleep more because that's gonna lead to way more output. Okay, this contradiction of I'm gonna sleep less so I can work more, it's a paradox. In fact, you work 10 times more effectively and more efficiently, you do better work when you sleep more and focus on sleep. If you invest more time in sleeping high quality and high quantity, I promise you your output, your energy, and your performance, everything is gonna be cranked up to essentially like turbocharge, okay? And it's so funny because it sounds so obvious. Maybe it's because I've been through what I've been through, but a lot of young people and older people, even adults these days, they don't sleep at all. They're stressed and all that. So uh, another thing you have to understand is that sleep quality is key. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So that's the third point is sleep hygiene. Okay. If you put all these three things together, you are going to double your results in the gym overnight. Your body composition is going to shift very rapidly. You're going to get leaner. You're going to feel tighter. You're going to feel fuller, better pumps testosterone levels are going to go through the roof. I'm almost scared at how high my testosterone levels have been getting. I'm 28 now, and they're definitely increasing at such a rate that they are way above what they were back when I was 22, even 23. So as far as sleep hygiene goes, just a few quick things to note when it comes to that. So it's basically just setting up your environment and a very small like wind down routine beforehand that'll get your body primed align your hormones, have everything balanced and regulated so that you make the most out of each night's sleep. Wake up feeling refreshed, ready to go, and ready to crush it. Now, the first is having a cold room, okay? If you're sleeping in a hot room, sleep quality is gonna go down the drain. So typically setting your room, scientifically been found somewhere between 15 and 19 degrees Celsius is gonna be best. The colder, the better. Next is a dark room, okay? No night lights. I mean, who's fucking using a night light anymore? Hopefully nobody watching this, but any lights that might be like coming in from the outside from other rooms do your best to make sure that the room is pitch black that goes a very long way again it's all like a circadian rhythm hormone type of a thing if you need to you can always like buy nightshades to to make sure that there's no light getting in through to your eyes uh, I personally probably never would use that, but if I absolutely had to, then I guess I would. Now, the next thing is no interruptions. So no way for you to actually get interrupted in your sleep. You know, like people have landlines these days, which is hilarious. My parents have a landline. I'm always making fun of them for it. It's like, oh, but what if somebody needs something? It's like, that's that makes no sense. My phone is on airplane mode. If somebody dies, I will find out the next morning. All right, what am I gonna do in the middle of the night anyway? Getting your phone out of the room would be best. I keep mine pretty far across the room. That makes a big difference. Having it under your pillow would be hilariously dumb, so don't do that, but like anywhere even closer to you, not worth it, okay? It's gonna disrupt your sleep quality as well. So get the smartphone out of the room, that's another one, and actually avoid using the smartphone about 30 minutes before getting in bed. Okay, or if you get in bed, like I like to do sometimes, maybe you just looked at your at your phone or some blue light, you get in bed and then you read for 30 minutes and then you call it because that's gonna give your body again a chance to wind down and you're gonna fall asleep faster as a result. Next is gonna be water consumption. If you're drinking a lot of water up until you go to sleep, you're going to interrupt your sleep during the middle of the night. Hopefully that one's pretty obvious as well. So limit water intake up until about two hours before bed. I'm drinking four or five liters of water a day, but I stop a couple hours before bed. So I'm front loading my water it helps with sleep. And lastly, it's just caffeine, stimulants, drugs, weed, alcohol. People will be like, oh, it helps me sleep. It's like you, you not only have no idea how that actually works or the human body or physiology or anything, but you don't even know that you don't know about that. You know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't even exist in your realm of thought that what you're doing is so detrimental that you can't even fathom its own detriment. If you think that weed helps you sleep, you're wrong. And all it's doing is making you dumber is so dumb, in fact, dumb enough to think that that is helping you sleep. So that is basically the video I'm bringing to you right now and to summarize, okay? If you do everything that I mentioned in this video, get the perspective shift in place, get a sleep schedule and actually build one. Focus on building a sleep schedule you can stick to and make sure you stick to it long enough so that it becomes a habit and so you can structure the rest of your life around it and then maximize the actual quality of each sleep via the checklist of things that I just told you, then there's a few insane things that you're going to experience. Higher testosterone 
levels, higher energy and better performance. You're gonna be absolutely ready to crush the gym. Insane recovery levels. I had injuries and aggravations I was dealing with for years that, th that have completely disappeared over just maybe a month of ramping my sleep up even more. Better output in general. Again, in the gym, you're gonna be building more muscle and strength rapidly, week after week after week. Strength gains are gonna be insane. You're gonna look way better. Skin, the health of your hair, nails. Better output outside of the gym. So if you wanna be more productive, get things done, accomplish, I don't know, take over the world in the meantime, this is gonna help you do that. And yes, the key here is that all of these things are actually very noticeable. When I say this, or when people think about the benefits of sleep, they think that they're not that big of a deal. No, they are extremely noticeable. They happen very quickly after implementing these things and you will never go back again, I promise you that. So that's it for the video. I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you take this advice and implement it because it will change your life. Now, a couple things. Make sure you subscribe because there's obviously caveats here. If you don't have the right workout plan in place, then you still could be leaving gains on the table. I'm actually gonna be dropping a new video, releasing my brand new workout programming and how my theory is behind all of that, all the new science surrounding it. I'm gonna redo some of my best videos around workout splits. So make sure you subscribe so you can catch those as well. So you can start stacking things on top of your brand new, insane, invincible sleep regimen. Next, I have my fat loss nutrition mastery course available right now at the lowest price it'll ever be and probably the lowest price you'll find anything at this level you can check that out in the link in the description on my website johnmango.com if you want to master your nutrition once and for all it's going to save you all the time you'll never have to work with anybody ever again no nutrition coach no nutritionist no physique coach you'll have mastered it all for yourself in maybe one to two hours of your time, you'll have it all set up. You'll build out your perfect nutrition system for predictable results to get lean, build muscle, both body recomp, all of it. And that's basically it. Comment down below any of your thoughts when it comes to or experiences when it comes to sleep. And have you noticed benefits like this or even other ones on top of that that might be worth mentioning? Drop them in the comments like share as well with anybody that you know that is a chronic person oh i don't need sleep i feel better off six hours feel better off six hours of sleep than you do when you sleep eight that is the number one sign that you're not sleeping enough anyways can't keep going on these tangents okay share it with those people for sure do this if you're serious about your results and reaching the top one percent physique fitness level health and other aspects of your life and if you do i'll see you at the top i'm out